Hello and welcome. My name is Kyle Bader, Data Foundation Architect at Red Hat. Joining me today is Ryan Looney from Intel, OpenVINO Product Manager. Today we'll be speaking about scalable natural language processing using BERT, OpenVINO, AI Kit, and Open Data Hub. To set the stage, I'll start by talking about Open Data Hub. Uh, Open Data Hub is a community project that was started out of Red Hat that aims to take a variety of open source, open source components and package them into an end-to-end -end AI machine learning platform for OpenShift. So the types of components that it draws from are Apache Spark, Kubeflow, TensorFlow, JupyterHub, and a variety of others, and we make them available very easily for users of either the OKD, open source distribution of Kubernetes, or a commercial offering from Red Hat. In either case, you can go to the Operator Hub Community Operators section, and you can install Open Data Hub and get going with your data science and data engineering problems. To give an idea of the problem domain that Open Data Hub seeks to address, um, I present this workflow that's more on the industrial and scalable side of machine learning. It starts with your existing data, and oftentimes before you get to the part where you start doing data science, you'll need to process and refine the data into a state where it's uh, where a data scientist can start to do an iterative loop of feature engineering and model experimentation to figure out a model that's going to um, that can be applied and solve some sort of business problem. When you're doing scalable machine learning, oftentimes you'll want to take the extracted features and flatten them and store them into some sort of scalable storage system like a S3 object storage solution like Ceph. And then ultimately, you'll want to train them and validate them using some sort of machine learning framework like PyTorch or TensorFlow. With the resulting model, you'll want to preserve it in a model repository. And from there, you can do an iterative loop of model optimization to create intermediate representations of the model that can be used for various different hardware targets or can potentially eliminate layers and make trade-offs between accuracy and throughput that may be appropriate for different situations. After that, it's time to push the model into production, in which case the model will get loaded into some sort of model serving engine, and that model serving engine will be integrated with some sort of application that's doing that's driving the business value. So whether it be some sort of recommendation service or image detection, um, that's ultimately when the model is in production and providing some sort of business value. But it doesn't stop there because the data that the model is acting on can change over time. So you need to have some sort of monitoring in place so that you can see whether there's drift between the data that the model is seeing in production and the data that the model was trained off of. And in the case that you do detect drift, that's when you go through another iterative loop of training off of fresher data and then repeating the cycle. So wrapping up on Open Data Hub, it's really about creating a blueprint and giving you an opinionated set of patterns and tools in order to kind of streamline data science and machine learning on Kubernetes platforms like OpenShift. And recently, we've been doing some work with Intel to add some additional tooling to help with the lifecycle uh, I kind of walked through in the previous slide, specifically by integrating the open source OpenVINO technologies, which help provide a variety of optimizations for models and then also have a model server for when it's time to put the models into production. But I'll let Ryan go ahead and speak more on OpenVINO and the integration work we've been doing recently. Thanks, Kyle. I'll quickly walk through some of the deep learning software from Intel. So on the left, we have uh, deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch, where we upstream some of our one API optimizations to get better performance with training and inference using the frameworks directly. We also have the AI and analytics toolkit, which bundles together some of these third-party frameworks and tools for data science uh, and classic machine learning, like Sidekit, Pandas, Modin. Uh, and then on the right, we have OpenVINO toolkit, which is an open source toolkit uh, that includes tools for optimizing and preparing uh, for models for deployment. So we have tools for quantization aware training, post-training quantization, uh, model serving, annotation, and more. Uh, 
This is a look at OpenVINO in a nutshell. Uh, on the left, we have deep learning frameworks, like I said, TensorFlow, PyTorch, and you take these fully trained models and then we can optimize them with the OpenVINO tools, which are available uh, now through Open Data Hub uh, using the OpenVINO operator. Uh, once you've optimized the models, you can then deploy them on uh, Intel hardware, whether it's an Intel integrated GPU at the edge or a Xeon scalable processor in the cloud, and you can deploy on Windows, Linux, and Mac. Today, we're going to show how to deploy Linux containers in Kubernetes. Uh, we're proud of our ecosystem adoption. You can see some of the partners who've integrated OpenVINO into their solutions, uh, and we are always trying to grow this list. So if you're an AI developer, whether you're open source, enterprise, uh, we would love for you to uh, integrate OpenVINO and leverage it for your deep learning solution. Kyle mentioned uh, the workflow in Open Data Hub, and here I'm showing where OpenVINO fits in. So we have an integration that plugs directly into the Jupyter spawner in Open Data Hub, and we'll show that uh, preview of that in a minute. We also have the Kubernetes operator for deploying uh, and creating inference endpoints so you can serve your models and uh, serve predictions uh, in a Kubernetes cluster. This is a high-level view of the Jupyter spawner in Open Data Hub. So if you, once you've installed the OpenVINO operator uh, you, and created a notebook uh, resource, you can see that there's just a button to select OpenVINO Toolkit, choose the size of your Jupyter container, and then click Start, and you'll have access to a set of tutorials that show how to perform post-training quantization, quantization-aware training uh, for different use cases take models from deep learning frameworks and convert them to the optimized OpenVINO Intermediate Representation, or OpenVINO IR for short. Uh, so here you can see an NLP example. We're actually going to show how to deploy a natural language processing model uh, in a Kubernetes cluster uh, at the end. OpenVINO also includes an open model zoo. It's a collection of 220 pre-trained deep learning models uh, some that are provided from, by Intel and others that come from the open source community. Uh, what this does is it enables you to quickly get started and download models for object detection, image classification, automatic speech recognition, segmentation, natural language processing, uh, you name it. There's a wide variety uh, of use cases. And all you have to do is launch a Jupyter, a notebook, and you can quickly, inside Open Data Hub, uh, use our command line tools to download a model and start using it uh, directly in, in Python in the Jupyter Notebook. We have a, a tutorial that shows uh, how to use these tools. Uh, so if you install Open Data Hub and OpenVINO together, uh, you can quickly dive in and start downloading and uh, trying out some of these models. Uh, as I mentioned, deploying and creating inference endpoints uh, in Kubernetes environments uh, requires a, a containerized microservice. So OpenVINO model server provides a container that exposes uh, endpoints, gRPC and REST, where you can send prediction requests from your application, whether it's written in Python, C++, Golang, you name it, over the REST API or gRPC API, you can send your input images or your text as an input and then get the uh, results back to the client application. This is great for scaling deployments with Kubernetes. So uh, here you can see we have multiple pods uh, with model server and that we're load balancing uh, with between requests that are coming in from our application. And this is what we'll show a demo of uh, at the end. This is a high level view of the OpenVINO model server architecture. As I said, it exposes a gRPC and a REST API endpoint. Uh, and additionally, it's doing configuration monitoring. What that means is checking uh, which models need to be served. And if there's additional models that you've added that you want to serve in production, the configuration management and monitoring is happening under the hood in OpenVINO model server. Uh, model management 
We have a concept of a model repository, which I'll uh, talk about on the next slide. But basically, when you're ready to roll out a new version of a model, let's say you have some new data, you've improved the accuracy, and you want to roll it out in production, you can do that automatically without interrupting the service and having any downtime for your application. OpenVINO's uh, model server is built on the plugin architecture from OpenVINO, so it's also easy to switch between CPU, GPU, and other Intel devices or combine them uh, together for increased throughput. So the model management, require uh, we have a concept of a model repository. Think of it like a GitHub repo for your deep learning models. So it can be in Google Cloud Storage, any S3 compatible storage, a persistent volume in Kubernetes or OpenShift, and you just create a directory structure that has your models, the versions, and then the, uh, the binaries, the graph of those models stored in those subdirectories. By default, the highest subdirectory is served, and every time uh, you add a new model, automatically the new model gets loaded, the uh, previous version of the model is not removed until the new model uh, is starting to serve predictions. So there's no interruption in service. You can hot swap the, the models, so to speak. Now the fun part. Uh, we're going to show a demo. Uh, Derek Trewinski, uh, the uh, technical lead uh, from the uh, model server team, is going to show us a demo taking a pre-trained and quantized uh, model quantized to integer 8 precision. This is a BERT natural language processing model. Uh, it's, part of, it's available for download from the Open Model Zoo. So first, it's going to download that model, and then it's going to deploy it uh, using OpenVINO model server in a Kubernetes environment. Once we have the model deployed and we're serving predictions, we can use a lightweight uh, application uh, to client application to ask questions. So uh, Derek will define a corpus for the uh, source. It's going to be like a Wikipedia page. And then we can uh, send queries to the API over the gRPC API, asking questions like, what is BERT? And then getting a response back. So Derek, why don't you show us the demo? Hello, my name is Derek Trabinski. I'm a software engineer at Intel and I will walk you through OpenVINO model server demo in OpenShift. I will show you how the model server and inference service can be deployed using OpenShift operator and how the cluster can be used to scale the inference execution. During the presentation, I will use uh, uh, the BERT model from OpenVINO model zoo, which performs uh, questions answering. It's a model quantized to integer 8 precision and uh, it's uh, trained on a squad 1.1 dataset. Now let's go to the OpenShift console and see how uh, to deploy uh, the model server using the operator. The operator is installed um, so I can create new instance of the model server by just using the operator graphical user interface. I just click create a model server. That brings a, a fully functional template with the ResNet model uh, hosted uh, on the Google Cloud Storage. The parameters define various aspects of the model server like uh, location of the, of the model re repository, um, model name, um, uh, model configuration, and also performance tuning options. The model server can be deployed also using OpenShift uh, command line by creating a resource model server with defined configuration. Uh, here I prepared the configuration of the model server with uh, BERT model. So the, the model is stored in, on a S3 compatible uh, storage. So let's check uh, the data structure in the model repository. Uh, 
Yeah, so here are the uh, model files. Now I will apply this configuration using OpenShift tool and deploy the model server. Okay, so let's check uh, the results in the console. Okay, so the uh, model server is uh, already initialized and deployed. And let's cr check uh, created resources. So here we can see uh, the operator created uh, the pod. So this uh, model server is um, deployed uh, in OpenShift uh, service mesh environment, which gives more uh, capabilities for controlling the traffic and monitoring it. It adds on each pod a sidecar proxy container, which is load balancing the calls to the service. That is the reason why the um, model server pod is reporting to containers. I can check the server logs in the in the console. So the pod has the ready state. So the log should confirm that the model is loaded and servic is started. Yes, the logs uh, confirms everything works uh, uh, as expected. So model is loaded. Now I will use uh, uh, the service uh, created by the uh, operator. This is the, the, the service. And I will use it to, to run the, um, the predictions to answer the questions. The service is uh, enabled in the cluster, so I will expose it using ingress component from the mesh. I will do it by adding the mesh virtual service and gateway resources. This is the configuration of the gateway and virtual service. And in this uh, cluster, the ingress controller is um, exposed uh, using uh, the port node. So I will be connecting to this port using uh, any of the nodes. So now I'm ready to connect to the service. I'll switch to another terminal. And first I will use a gRPC client querying the uh, model parameters. This client is from the model server uh, GitHub repository. So I'm connecting to, to the node using the exposed node port. Okay, so uh, in response, I can see the information about the model inputs and uh, model outputs. Now I will use the BERT client written in, in Python. Its code is uh, also in the GitHub uh, repository of the model server in uh, example client part. So here we can learn more about it. So this uh, client takes as uh, an argument uh, the URL to the web page with the uh, knowledge source and uh, the questions to be question to be asked. So here I'm connecting to the gRPC endpoint. Here are the parameters related to the uh, model input names, vocabulary file, and here is the URL 
to the wiki page and the question. So the script uh, is splitting the whole content of the uh, web page and asks the model server for answers for each part. Then it gives uh, the most likely free answers. So I can start this client also in the in the loop, so it will be uh, keep sending the same question. So no, so let's check uh, what the mesh monitoring can uh, can detect. So Kiali and Grafana are the monitoring tools installed together with the OpenShift uh, mesh service. So we can see here the throughput results, but we will not fully take advantage of the uh, cluster scalability. So right now each request is sequential, uh, so there is only one uh, inference execution at a time. To show you the full advantage of the scalability, I will use another client, which sent asynchronous gRPC calls to the service. It's written in C++ and it's not doing any print post-processing to simplify the load generation. This client is documented in the GitHub repository. In a CPP folder. I will stop this one. I have already prepared a Docker image with um, this um, uh, client, so I will start uh, a job in the OpenShift uh, um, with, uh, with the client, which uh, connects to the model server and asks uh, 10 million questions. So I will use um, the OpenShift command line to deploy this job. Let's check the results in the console. Okay, so the client is starting. Client has started and uh, is uh, generating the load. To improve the uh, throughput in the model server, I will tune the CPU plugin config for automatic configuration of the OpenVINO execution streams. So here is the plugin config. So that will swap uh, the pod with the model serving. Uh, with the new configuration, but uh, all will happen without an interruption for the for the client. So the report shows the utilization with some delay, so we will see the change. In, in a moment. So be, besides the Grafana statistic, I can also uh, monitor the traffic in the, beside the Kiali, I can also open uh, Grafana dashboard.
Okay, so we can see the throughput is now increased and st st stabilized. But uh, let's uh, imagine uh, that a single node uh, cannot uh, deliver a sufficient capacity for our needs. Uh, so we might have hundreds or thousands of clients connecting to the, uh, to the model. With OpenShift cluster, we can easily scale the capacity by adding more replicas and nodes. I'm going to do this, do this now. So I will edit the model server configuration and I will add another replica. Okay, so now um, two replicas are operational, so we should see the increased throughput from the service. The calls from the clients are now distributed between two replicas and two nodes. With the default Kubernetes load balancing, which is operating on the third OSI network layer, gRPC calls are uh, connection preserving. That means that each uh, request from the client would be routed to the same replica. With the load balancing on the OCI application layer, which is the case for the uh, mesh, each call from the gRPC client is dispatched separately, so it can utilize several replicas and nodes. So in a moment we should see increased uh, throughput from the from the service. Yeah, this is in uh, Kiali and uh, also in Grafana. Okay, so it's already increased. So let's uh, let's um, increase uh, the capacity even more by adding the fair to a replica and see what uh, happens. I will repeat similar steps. So we have now three operational replicas, and again we can check how that will impact the uh, throughput results. The throughput should be increased in Grafana and in Kiali in a, in a moment. So to summarize what was presented here, I explain how the model server can be deployed in OpenShift using the operator. I also demonstrated how to use gRPC client to run a query to the BERT model. Finally, you saw how the inference service can be scaled horizontally uh, when adding more resources on a single node is not sufficient. So now we can see the impact from the third uh, replica. So the throughput is increased again and the response time is uh, reduced. And in a moment, it will be the same results visible here in, in Grafana. So that concludes the demonstration. So back to you, Ryan.